Howdy, hey, how's it going? <laughs> Howdy, how's it going? Welcome to my channel, Jessica in Progress. Today we're going to give you a, another reading vlog for Once Upon a Book Club. Um, this is the BFF Pact. The book of this month is Happy Place by Emily Henry. So I have only read Book Lovers. Uh, and I super enjoyed that. Even if it did have its problems, I was able to look over them. I'm super excited for this one, especially because I am coming off of a sickness and I just want a book that's gonna make me feel a little happy. So we're gonna do this. So Once Upon a Book Club is a subscription in which they want you to read the book that they send to you immediately. So they give you gifts uh, that go along with the book. Um, along with that, they always give you a nice little booklet that comes with discussions from the author, uh, book club questions to have, and then the back is always different. So this one is Never Have I Ever, bookish edition. Okay, then the uh, quote card usually also has an author's note, but this one is just a quote card. Um, you cannot stop time. All you can do is point yourself in a direction and hope the wind will let you get there. Um, and this is always a direct quote from the book. The same quote will always be on a bookmark. So I love that it always gives you a bookmark for your book. So yeah, when you uh, get to the page number with the thing, it will describe whatever item you're about to get. That way your immersive reading process is in there. So our very first book, or our very first package is going to be on page 97. And I always love the packaging that... Um, that Once Upon a Book Club gives in. They're always really quirky and always part of the theme. Um, so page 97. Um, I'm going to guess that it's a book. Um, and I'm going to go even further and guess that it's a classic. But it would be super funny if it was another Emily Henry book. The next page is going to be on 213. And this is a little lobster thing. So I'm assuming we're going to have a friend's reference in here. Um, let me see. Can't tell you what it is. A beach ball. It feels like a blow up toy. And then the last one is on page 283. And I'm thinking a tote or a towel. It's fabric-y in here. And then it's got like a paper lining. So that's all I know from what's in here. I already know a little bit about the book. I know that it is a second chance romance where these two are going on a pre-planned vacation with all of their friends and they have recently broken up and haven't told any of their friends. So they're also fake dating. Um, so we're going to just have like a fake dating, second chance romance, cute little happy beach read with a bunch of friends. Um, and I'm ex super excited for it. It's going to be a super happy, super fun time. It is 300, those are acknowledgements. It is 385 pages long. So yeah. <laughs> so I'll be, so I'll be back after I finish reading all the way up to page 97. In that right, Sten? In that right. Yeah. All right. Confession, um, I stayed up to like 3 a.m. reading the book, so uh, we're now a little more than halfway through, and we have uh, two packages to open. <laughs> um, I tried to make my background a little more lively since the dogs are sleeping. If they rejoin us, I have summer bandanas for them, um, but otherwise, I don't have like any beach-going summer stuff anymore. We kind of left it or sold it when we moved. Like at most we have uh, is, uh, tubes for the river, but they're still in their box because when we went to the river my sister already had them so we didn't need to unblow up, unbox ours. Anyway, when I heard like beach read and like happy, 
See, I'm not very familiar with Henry, Emily Henry, so I didn't fully realize that she was a Vermont girly, and I forgot that beaches exist outside of the Gulf Coast in Florida. So I was picturing more of like a summer beach time, and they're more like, it's probably summer, but it's like lobster fest up in Maine. So that's like the vibe that we're going for beach-wise is the New England cold beaches with like lobsters and blueberry ice cream and stuff like that. Again, I am halfway through. I like to keep the unpackaging portion a little spoiler free. Um, so if you want like me to deep dive spoiler into the book, we will do that after all of this. But so far, it is a really good book. I am invested in the characters. I find the situations that they're in for the most part believable. So one of the hardest things about fake dating is like, why are you fake dating? They set up a really good believable scenario as to why they are fake dating, or at least the reasons why they fake date. Do I think the situations that cause them to fake date are super believable? I think it totally could happen, but it's very unlikely that the situation around them that causes them to fake date would happen exactly like that. But I think the main pair's relationship is very believable. I think um, it's set up really well, especially since we are doing like a flat, like a real time and a flashback time. So we're fleshing out how they originally started their relationship the same time we're going through them fake dating. And for the most part, it's every other chapter, but occasionally we'll get two or three real life chapters back to back. I also believe that their breakup is very believable. So we figure out when we start that these two used to be engaged and situations kind of happened that put them into really tough times. And I think that and I believe that them breaking up is reasonable for the situations that they were put into, as well as their background. So one thing that plays a lot into these characters is their parental trauma growing up as kids. Um, and I think that's also the reason why the fake dating works really well in this. One of the main characters, best friends, her dad owns like a beach house. And this is the last summer that they're going to be there because he's on his like fifth wife parental trauma. So he's on his like fifth wife and she's like, you bought that house with your first wife. I don't want you to have it. So they're selling it. And it's not like they can buy it because it's a multi-million dollar beach home in <laughs> the New England area. So they're making the last of the trip and it was supposed to be only our main character Harriet going on the trip, not the ex-fiance Wynn. But all of the other friends kind of got together and like bullied everyone into showing up for this trip. So like we have another couple that was planning on leaving early because they now run a farm, but because the mate, the owner, there are like six friends here. Okay. So we have our main couple, which is Harriet and Wynn. And then we have our driving force couple is what I'll call them, which is, um, Prath and Sabine, Sabrina or Sabina. I don't remember. Um, and then we have our farm couple, um, which is Cleo and Kimmy. <laughs> so the farm couple was planning on leaving earlier because they run a farm and they need, and it's like busy season for them. Driving force couple is like, no, one, this is the last summer that we're going to have here. And two, oh my God, we're going to get married at the end of, the, of it. Um, and it's very shocking to them because um, Sabrina is the one with like the dad that has like six wives. <laughs> so she said that she was never going to get married and then so this turn of events um, makes them stay um, and makes the situation kind of believable for them to fake date throughout all of this because it's more convenient um, to one not break up the friend group and ruin this last vacation um, and two one of the things <laughs> that they said from the start was like seeing um, Wynn and Harriet be together for so long and work and not mess up the friend group gave them the courage to one start dating Prath and Sabrina um, one start dating and then two realize that they can get married and it would be okay 
Um, so they're just like, now we really can't tell anyone that we broke up. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much where we are. I fully believe that Chloe knows what's going on. Like she, there's been hints in here from pretty much the first time we saw her that she knows maybe not entirely that they are broken up, but that something is wrong and different. So we haven't gotten to that part yet, but that's all I'm going to say about that. So the first thing, before we even got to a gift, um, they are doing like this grocery gladiators is what they call it. Um, so the other team wins. When they win, they start playing We Are the Champions over their phone speakers. Uh, and they gave us a little QR code at that, so when you ran into it, uh, you would hear We Are the Spe We Are the Champions by Queen playing. Um, which was really cool, and I totally would have done it had it not been like 2 o'clock in the morning when I came across this with uh, Ryan asleep on me in bed. <laughs> So anyway, a couple pages later, we get to our first gift, um, and in here they are doing their book shopping for the for the week. So typically they all go out and buy a book. Our main character Harriet is like a cozy romance girly. She is a brain surgeon, so she basically wants to like turn off her brain. The bookstore that they go to is named Murder She Read, so. I believe that I was completely right in saying that page 97 is a book and it's a classic and I'm gonna go further and hope that it's murder she wrote so let's go ahead and open that up now page 97 oh cute so it's actually a um a little beach uh, murder mystery cozy murder mystery a Big Trouble in Little Greek Town by Kate Collins, a goddess of Green Street mystery. Look, it's got a little raccoon. So this is going to be a mystery novel about a girl named Athena who is raising her son, the pet raccoon named Oscar. Um, and she's in the Lake Michigan area and she stumbles herself into a crime scene with a dead photographer. So... That's the closing mystery. I don't know if he'll be in frame. <laughs> but Kara's here. So we've got Kara. And then over there's Stid. The next page, I'm sorry if the crinkles are too much. The next page is 213. Um, we are in not quite real life, but still Wednesday. Um, <laughs> and... They're like going on a boat ride or something and the quote for this is Kimmy spikes a beach ball right at us and I dive away from when my face tingling my smile aching my whole body buzzing um so did I call that it was a beach ball or did I call that it was a beach ball <laughs> we'll have to open it up and see um and I was wrong about the lobsters being a friends reference um it is a lobster fest reference. You need to help me open it. We'll go. <laughs> yes. Okay. Ooh, it's a glitter beach ball. You all ready for this? So we've got a clear beach ball with purple sparkles and it says think of your happy place think of your happy place where's your happy place oh where's your happy place so i'm gonna let them play and i'm gonna go read the rest of the book yeah think of your think of your happy place okay work. So we're back and I have finished the book 
And no, I totally didn't cry for like the last 75 pages. Not at all. No, not at all. Um, I really liked it. Super good book. I can't really explain more of what's going on without kind of going into depth and spoiling it more than I already have. So we're just going to dive into the last package on page 283. Um, 283, it's at the bottom of the page here. And we've got the line, the shower door unlatches and winds open. I hear the rasp of a towel being pulled from a hook and wrapped against skin. So did I also call this being a towel or did I also call this being a towel? Let's get this open. Okay. It's striped gray and white. Wind's beach towel. And then it has the quote right on the little slip. A 70 by 38 inch towel that is 100% cotton. Here we go. Nice little towel. With little ruffles that the dogs are going to eat, apparently. Okay. There you go, Cara. So it's a romance, so you know what's going to happen. But we're going to move on into spoilers. Uh, spoilers in three, two, one. Um, I almost thought for half a second that this was actually going to be a book where they don't end up together in the end because it really seemed like they had gotten into a place where even though they were perfect for each other, it just wasn't the right time for them because they were very much figuring out who they were. So one thing that we end the book with is Harriet being like, I have done this medical career for everyone else and I hate my job. Like I hate going to work. Um, and it starts off with her kind of starting a self discovery journey at the age of 30. And we don't really get the full self discovery journey because it very much her self discovery starts at the end of this book. Um, and it kind of started a little bit before as well with her breaking up with, with her and Wynn breaking up and her discovering pottery and struggling with the fact that she's always been a people pleaser and she's never really done the thing for herself. I'm going to insert the meme. So that's like a big problem with this. And then, then we also have Sabrina being like this friend group would totally fail if I wasn't the one putting in all of the effort because I'm the one that texts first. I'm the one that plans the things. I'm the one that makes sure that we get together. I'm the one that sets up the schedules and itineraries. And I totally understand that too. And then Chloe is just like, my life is so different because I feel like I'm the boring one. And I feel like I'm the one that people will drop off immediately because I've stopped drinking because I now wake up at 4 a.m. for a farm and I go to bed dead asleep rim at like eight. Um, and then one of the things that she is hiding from them. So <laughs> I was wrong about Chloe knowing what was going on. Chloe was actually hiding the fact that she was pregnant the entire time um, because she uh, was too early and she didn't want to like, I don't know exactly why she was hiding it. It was a little like, why is she hiding the fact that she's pregnant? And I think it's more just like she couldn't say it. She's worried about it. She's scared about being a ba bad mom. Um, and it's another one of those things of like, when I say it, it becomes real. Um, which is also one of the things that Harriet was struggling with when telling all of her friends that her and Wynne had broke up, broken up. So one of the things about Wynne being forced onto this trip is that Prath had visited him and found out that Harriet and Wynne had broken up already. Um, so he and Sabrina already knew that they had broken up and that they hadn't been told. Because Prath finds out as he's like going through uh, Wynn's phone to like send a prank message to Harriet only to see that they haven't talked to each other in a couple of months. So Sabrina kind of set up a lot of things to try and get them back together, not even knowing what was going on or what was wrong. And then, so there, so, I mean, that's really 
like, you know what a romance is. I liked the story dynamic, the storytelling. I liked the flash forwards and the flash to today's um, because I, I was worried with this book when we got it that it wasn't, that it was all gonna be fake dating. Um, but I liked that we got to build the background of their relationship through her kind of zoning out into what she calls her happy place. So you know the difference in your time period because she either starts the chapter with like happy place, Knott's Harbor, Maine, um, or with real life Tuesday. So you also get like the progression of the week and where we are. And then there are some times in here where it turns into not quite real life, you know, um, and then it has like unhappy place and like dark place. Um, so you kind of get this feeling of like her sectioning off her life. And one of the things that they say very early in the book is that it's hard for her to go to her happy places when she's mad and frustrated because when is a part of all of her happy places. Um, so the structure of the book I enjoyed. I was a little worried at first because the first part of the book starts off in happy place and it's very like dreamy and like meditation therapy like smell the way smell the salt hear the waves stuff like that um but it doesn't stick with that it moves more into a natural tone of writing throughout it and it's very easy and emily henry just has a really good writing style that i like i just like kind of like ate it up and i didn't with romances and sometimes with like happy contemporaries which is why I rate them different. I don't always go in there being like, okay, I see a thing that can make it better. Okay, this thing is a little plot contrivance or what have you. I go in and I'm just like, I want this book to make me feel happy and I want it to make me feel things. And if we explore other topics, then it's really great. And because it explored so many other topics than just the romance, but I enjoyed the topics that it discussed. I felt the characters were believable and lovable and for the most part a little diverse. <clears throat> like I was picturing a bunch of different people and then I think the cover also kind of tells you is a pretty good description picture of what they look like even if it is cartoonish. I loved it. I'm gonna give this five stars much like I did with book lovers. I don't know if it'll stay five stars but I know that this one will hold up to a reread really well whereas I don't know if I were to reread book lovers I would like it as much as I did the first time but I think I could reread this one not immediately but I think I could reread this one and still feel all of the feelings that I felt when reading it the first time. I think this box itself was also a good win. Towels are always great. It's not like the uh, the most absorbent of towels. It's definitely a beach towel. Like you're not going to use this getting out of a shower. Um, but I would use it to like rub sand off for sure. Beach ball. Um, if I go to a pool or do anything, it's will be a fun beach ball. And I am excited to read this quirky little murder mystery thing, a little cozy thing with a raccoon named Oscar. Like, how cute. Um, so I think this box was a total win and I super enjoyed it. One thing I wanted to do before we ended Let's go through the never have I ever. I'll take a picture of this and like put it right here. Uh, that way we can all read it together. So never have I ever stayed up all night to finish a book. I have bought an entire series before finishing the first book. Yeah. <laughs> read on a boat. Yes. Read an autobiography or a memoir. Yes. Ignored. Yes. Ignored housework so I could keep reading. Read a book over 700 pages long. Accidentally bought the same book more than once. I don't know about X. No, I did. So um, I was going to say the Divergent series, when Allegiant came out, I had originally bought it immediately and then saw a collector's edition and immediately bought that. 
but this year I read Under the Whispering Door and I got it on the Kindle because I just wanted to read it um, that night and I didn't, you know, um, and I didn't want to wait. And then when I went to go reorganize all my bookcases, um, when I bought my new ones, I found the hardcover of Under the Whispering Door and I apparently already had it. <laughs> so I have already bought the same book more than once on accident. I have been to many book events and author signings. I have joined a book club, worn book themed clothing or accessories, read the same book more than once. I don't currently have a shelf of special edition books. That's actually a fairly newer thing. At least it came about when I was in the absence of reading. So, um, if you think back to like the YA dystopian era, at that time where the big boom of reading was, um, the special editions were basically like the classic bounds of the Barnes and Noble like leather bounding or whatever. And then also they would like gild and rough end the pages and that would be a collector's edition. But now collector's editions are like sprayed edges, alternate artwork, and it's crazy intense. <laughs> And I remember when I got Outcrate for the first time, way, way early, they were like, oh my God, we have an alternate cover. And it was just heartless, but the colors were switched. Um, and that was kind of like the beginning of it. And that's when I died out of books for university. <laughs> but anyway, so we're on 11. Forced your friends to read your favorite book, yes. Post posted of you reading a book on social media, yes read more than one book at the same time, yes, gotten a book theme tattoo, yes, uh, tracked your reading journal in a, tracked your reading in a book journal, yet, 20. No, I was on 15, 16, 16. Um, bought a book cover just for the cover design, <laughs> yes, 17. Uh, Cried over a book in public, yes, 18, and then had a book-themed advent calendar. I have not. So we are on 18 out of 20. That gives me book obsessed. That being said, great book, great box. Remember, we are all in progress. And I have to go feed the dogs. <laughs> Bye.